Greetings for everyone, dear colleges. My name is Alexander Balan. I am an anesthesiologist and I'd like to make a presentation for you that is called anesthetic considerations for carotid artery stenting. And this presentation will be available on 30 of September on the International uh, Congress of Romanian Society uh, of Neurosurgery. It's International Congress. So let's start. Pre-anesthetic management, of course, determining the degree of preparation of, uh, patient, of the patient for surgery, establishing anesthetic risk, ASA, ASA, or American Society of Anesthesiology, elaboration of the anesthesia plan, preoperative, intra- and post-operative or post-anesthetic period management. Of course, assessment of patient of somatic risk factors. Evaluation of full blood count, uh, coagulation system or coagulogram, like proton bean, activated proton bean time, INR, and fibrinogen. Lipid profile with fractions of uh, cholesterol, like low density, high density uh, lipids, triglycerides, and total cholesterol. EKG and chest X ray, uh, echocardiography and cardiologist consultation in cases of heart failure, severe risk disorders, and pronounced ischemic disease, and consultation of other specialists in dependence of uh, patient comorbidities, if there is necessary to prepare patient well and uh, diminish risk of uh, morbidity and mortality during and after the procedure. Let's talk a little bit about uh, cerebral perfusion pressure as patient during the insertion of the stand will have a period of inflation and occlusion of a full occlusion or a partial occlusion of the carotid uh, artery and it can decrease uh, flux of the blood to the brain and of course decrease cerebral perfusion pressure. So, cerebral perfusion pressure represents a net pressure gradient that carries oxygen to the brain tissue. And it is measured by the difference between MAP or mean arterial pressure and ICP or intracranial pressure. And it is measured in millimeters of mercury. Cerebral perfusion pressure regulation is critical in the treatment of patients with intracranial pathology including shock, hemodynamic distress, and traumatic brain injury. A cerebral perfusion pressure and cerebral blood flow will continue to remain significantly unchanged over a wide range of mean arterial pressure. For this reason, we uh, pay attention for this mean arterial pressure and uh, 50 to 150 millimeters of mercury is the range or a target that we have to reach for a normal uh, cerebral perfusion pressure of patient and intracranial pressure is between 5 to 10 millimeters. The average uh, cerebral perfusion pressure is generally 60 to 80. At these values uh, perfusion is going well and patient will not suffer uh, from low uh, perfusion. A Kelly Monroe uh, doctrine is that uh, skull is a rigid fixed anatomical space and therefore the increase in intracranial pressure will increase uh, if the volume of uh, any of the uh, cranial component will increase. So as uh, intracranial pressure increases, compliance decreases and perfusion decreases. Normal is uh, cerebral blood flow has a property of self-regulation like constriction and dilation of different arteries to compensate this high or low flow and going through the collateral arteries in the circle of Willis. What are uh, methods for assessing cerebral perfusion? So measuring uh, mean arterial blood pressure, which is non-invasive by cuff or invasively by cannulating any of the peripheral, peripheral arteries like uh, radial or femoral, mostly radial. And uh, 
Second component is uh, intraventricular catheter, which is uh, invasive and necessitate insertion, usually in the lateral ventricle. Also could be measured uh, uh, speed or rate of blood flow in the middle cerebral artery by non-invasively by Doppler transcranial Doppler ultrasonography. Uh, let's move on pre-anesthetic preparation of the patient. So patient should take dual antiplatelet therapy four to five days with clopidogrel and acetyl salicylic acid. And of course should stop warfarin for five days before surgery and perform repeated INR and protrombin time uh, tests 24 hours before surgery. If it is very low, it should be delayed. Uh, if they have not been administered, the method, another method is of administration of clopidogrel 300 mg four to five hours before surgery, but it is not applied too often and everybody want to go by protocol and be assured. Apply elastic bandages immediately before surgery if patient have varicose veins of the lower limbs and of course infusion with any so crystalline solution like uh, normal saline solution or ringer or anything like that around five milliliter one hour before surgery types of anesthesia applied so sedation continuous anesthetic monitoring and general anesthesia sedation of three types like mild mo moderate and deep and the next stage is general anesthesia after deep sedation. Let's talk about uh, sedation advantages and disadvantages. Of course, they are advantages. Advantages are like patient is relaxed, feeling comfort, uh, make improvement of high blood pressure to normal. One, brain protection, motionless and less pain and discomfort and puncture or other manipulations. Disadvantages are that patient can be or could be disinhibited or have a disinhibited behavior, less response to solutions or to atropine in case of low blood pressure and bradycardia during the balloon inflation or stand placement, less cooperative during the assessment and evaluation of consciousness, need oxygen supply, in both cases need oxygen supply and may lead, may lead to transfer to mechanical ventilation if sedation is done very deeply. A continuous anesthetic monitoring advantages that patient is more cooperative and less response to uh, undesired un side effects like, like bradycardia and low blood pressure and more, res more responsive to solution of atropine as here atropine is like uh, savage. Disadvantages are that uh, patient have more discomfort and is alert and have a fear of procedure and of, and or of uh, pain and need more medication to decrease, for example, blood pressure and maintain it at a normal range. General anesthesia rarely applied and is done only or with patients which are uncooperative with dementia, encephalopathy and unstable during the procedure. Here we have uh, ACT uh, measurement, ACT plus from Medtronic, which measures ACT and we administer during uh, uh, catheter, operating catheter uh, placement heparin at a dose of 70 to 100 uh, international unit per kilogram and we we have to reach values of ACT like 200 to 250 seconds and of course it is measured two minutes immediately after administration of heparin. Another technique is to administer bivalirudine which is a direct from being inhibitor which is an effective alternative to heparin due to its short health life of 25 minutes. Uh, sub subsequently, heparin is administered repeatedly under the control of the activated clotting time or ACT. 
So a half time of heparin is one hour and after one hour we have to measure again ACT and add additional dose of heparin. During balloon inflation the risk of ischemia may be reduced by maintaining normal or high infusion pressure by uh, infusing uh, crystalline solution for example. Maintaining optimal blood flow results in a rapid recovery of the patient and decreases the risk of delirium, for example. Hemodynamics. So, during manipulation of the sinus caroticus with the excitation of the nerve herrings, which is a small branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve, it is per perceived by uh, receptors as a high pressure or increased blood pressure and uh, tends to do bradycardia and hypotension, reaching in some cases to cardiac arrest. Very rarely, of course, if we, uh, it is not prevented by uh, atropine dose, prophylactic or uh, indicated during the bradycardia. And of course, it requires uh, vigilance in preventing bradycardia during all the stages especially during the inflation of the balloon. Possible intra- and post-procedure complications, so they are classified as the major complications and minor complications. Major are brain stroke, intracranial hemorrhage, carotid perforation, very rarely, at the level of vascular access like hematoma, and minor like spasm, hypotension, bradycardia, carotid artery dissection, post-contrast encephalopathy and transient ischemic attack. And the most important part of these complications uh, is uh, represented by uh, methods of prevention. A distal embolization caused by the release into the bloodstream of thrombotic, necrotic or atherosclerotic material uh, could be prevented by preoperative administration of dual antiplatelet anticoagulant a therapy effective heparinization during ACT, uh, during the ACT verification, and during the procedure, especially right after the insertion of operational catheter. Minim minimization of aggressive manipulations with a catheter, both with the moment of dilation with the balloon. Intracranial hemorrhage, once suspected, the procedure is terminated immediately and the anticoagulation reversal is performed with protamine sulfate and it is given in a report of 1 mg uh, in ratio of 1 mg of protamine to 100 units of heparin. So you see uh, a table like with a dosage uh, that correspond and when to administer. For example, if patient uh, have 40 minutes after the first dose of heparin and we have to reverse uh, reverse its effect. So here is a calculation for 70 kilogram uh, adult, normal adult, and it will be like 35 milligrams of protamine sulfate and it will be like 3.5 milliliters. And you can put a pause and uh, take a look for every time or a time passed and a, a corresponding uh, dosage in milligrams or milliliters. Methods to prevent the following complications. Carotid artery spasm. So it resolves spontaneously once the catheter is removed and also could be administered any of the following drugs like nematop, verapamil, papaverine or nitroglycerin at the following doses. Bradycardia and hypotension, this uh, phenomena is transient and commonly encountered in response to balloon dilation and even uh, after the uh, stent is placed at the carotid bifurcation level and is effectively avoided by medication with solution of atropine at dose of 0.5 or 1 mg. High doses of atropine should be avoided in elderly patients having a confusion, confusing effect and for subsequent radi radiological examination to be informative. And high doses like more than 3 mg can uh, produce an agitating effect and patient will be very 
agitated and uh, uncooperative. A correction of uh, the causes of hypotension like volume depletion, infusion of, sol of crystalline solution preoperatively, and of course managing of cardiac pathologies. Vascular access hemorrhage uh, could be uh, uh, coupled with volume replenishment and uh, administration of erythrocyte concentration according to the general blood test and erythrocyte and hemoglobin level. And post anesthetic period is very important and here the main points are to give oxygen, to make prophylaxis of gastric ulcers, to give infusion for patient. So also you could administer additional drugs, but they are not uh, mandatory. Antibiotic prophylaxis, here are many doubts, like someone uh, related that administer one dose, someone not, uh, someone two doses at different sources. Uh, the main part is to maintain blood pressure less than 130 per 80, or normal blood pressure with uh, uh, continuous administration or of oral antihypertensive drugs, which a patient uh, took previously. Or you can administer some intravenous drugs if patient is placed in intensive care. If not, you can administer uh, drugs through the uh, continuous automatic syringe. As you have to prevent this cerebral hyperperfusion syndrome, which is caused by high blood pressure. Only high blood pressure cause and is considered the main cause of cerebral hyperperfusion pressure. And to avoid, the, avoid this, you have to maintain uh, blood pressure to normal. Uh, you can uh, start feeding of patient per oral after restoration of full consciousness and the presence of peristalsis. Thank you very much for your attention and have a great time.